Hello and welcome back to part 4 of making snake with Unity Tiny. The last video we made the food system so that when we eat the food it grows our tail. But if you notice, when you run into your tail you do not die so in this video we will be setting up the collision with the snake tail. If you do collide with your snake tail, we will remove all of the snake tail segments and reset the snake head back to the center of the screen. So to get started, We'll go ahead and open up our .c -sharp project. Now let's open up our snakehead file, which is a component. And inside of here, we're going to add a new variable, and we're going to call it remove tail. When the remove tail variable gets set to true, we'll fire a system that's going to remove all the segments of our tail. So let's set up a system to determine whether or not remove tail should be set to true. Let's go back into our project and go into our scripts folder. Inside of here, let's create a new C sharp system. We'll call this tail collision system. After creating the system, make sure to go to assets open dot C sharp project so your IDE recognizes the file. And then go into your IDE, and inside the tail collision system, let's put it inside of our snake namespace by saying namespace snake, and putting an open and closed brackets around our class. Now inside of our tail collision system, we need to find the dynamic buffer snake segment that we created on our snake head. The way we're going to do that is by saying entities dot for each dynamic buffer. The dynamic buffer that we want is the snake segment. We'll call it segments. Then we want to reference the translation. And we'll call it translation. Now we'll also want to reference the snake head. And we'll call it snake. Create your lambda expression in an open and closed bracket and a semicolon at the end. If you have an error, make sure to import your unity.tiny.core2d. Now inside of the for each, we're going to say segs equals segments dot reinterpret. Then we're going to type entity. Then we'll say to native array. And we'll put unity dot collections dot allocator dot temp and make sure to put a var at the beginning. Now what this is doing is taking our segments dynamic buffer and we're reinterpreting it to an array and the array type is of entity. Now that our segments is an array, let's say for, we're going to use i for the variable and we're going to iterate over segs dot length then inside of here, let's get our tail translation and store it in a variable. So let's say var tail translation is equal to entity manager dot get component data. The component data that we want is the translation and the entity we want it off of is segs i. Now that we've stored the tails translation into a variable, let's say if math dot distance and we need to import our math library by saying using unity.mathematics. Then for the first part of the distance function, we'll use translation.value. And the second part, we'll use tail translation.value. And then put a less than or equal to 1. Now what this is saying is, if our snake head and any segment of our snake tail comes within one unit of each other, we can perform code. The code that we will be performing is to access the snake head and set remove tail to true. So we'll say snake dot remove tail is equal to true. And since we're already accessing the segments here and the snake tail is dead anyways, we can go ahead and say segments dot clear. Then we want to dispose of our reinterpret. So outside of our for each loop, we'll say segs.dispose. 
Now that we've set the snake.remove tail equal to true, let's create another system that checks for when snake.remove tail is equal to true, and when it is equal to true, we'll reset our snake head. And we'll also unload all of the snake tail scene references that are within our game. So to do that, let's go back into our project. We're going to create a new system. The system's going to be called the destroy tail system. So right click, create C sharp system and call it destroy tail system. Then let's go to assets, open dot C sharp project. So our IDE recognizes the script. And we can open our destroy tail system class that we just created. Let's go ahead and put it inside of our namespace called snake. And inside of here, let's find our snake head so we can check whether or not snake.remove tail is set to true or not. To find the snake head, we're going to say entities.for each. Then let's get a reference to the entity that the snake head component is on by saying entity entity. Then we'll reference the snake head and call it snake. We'll also reference the translation so that we can recenter the snake head to the center of the screen. Make sure to add the using for the translation. Now the first thing we'll say inside of here is if snake.remove tail is equal to false, we'll return so that it does not continue to run the code if we do not need to remove the tail. Now let's create a variable so that we can destroy all the snake tail scene references outside of the for each loop because you cannot remove any entities within a for each loop. So let's say bool destroy all is equal to false so every time the on update runs it'll make sure destroy all is set to false now if snake.remove tail is equal to true we'll set destroy all to be equal to true we'll set the snake.direction to be equal to float 3.0 make sure to add your using We'll also say snake.remove tail is equal to false because we are currently removing the tail and we do not want to remove it again. Then we can say if destroy all scene service dot adding your using and then say dot unload all scene instances. The scene instances that we want is stored on the game config configuration data component. So we'll say world dot tiny environment dot get config data. The config data that we want is the game config and what we want off of it is the snake tail scene reference. Excellent. Go ahead and save everything. And we'll go back into our Unity project and click play and see if everything that we did is working. Let's grow our tail out long enough so that we can destroy ourselves. And you'll see I managed to destroy myself. Let's try it one more time to make sure that was actually working. If we just go the opposite direction that we're currently moving, we'll try to move through ourselves, which should destroy the snake head which it did. Let's try one more time. Excellent. That all seems to be working. Let's see if it is recentering it. I don't know if I could tell if it did. We did not recenter our snake head yet. So let's go back into our IDE and make sure we're recentering the snake head when the snake dies. You'll see that we're setting the snake dot direction to be set to float 3.0, which cancels the movement of our snake head. But we'll also want to say, translation.value is also equal to float 3.0. Now let's click play inside of the IDE since we didn't make any changes within Unity and we should be able to test it straight from the IDE. So now that we have three pieces of snake tail, we can go through ourselves. We destroyed our tail and recentered the snake head. Cool. Everything seems to be working. 
This was a pretty easy video. In the next video, we'll set up the UI and we should be done with the snake game. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And if you have any comments or suggestions, also please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you and have a wonderful day.